It's the year 2025, and now it's possible to generate a full textured and lit 3D environment from a single photo. It's pretty wild. I didn't believe it at first, but I've been testing this out for the last couple of weeks, and the results in Unreal Engine are really kind of incredible. The company that makes this possible is called World Labs, and the new product is called Marble. What it basically does is generate a 3D panoramic from a source image that can be either a real world image or of course generated in the year 2025. And it takes that panoramic, it converts it to a full Gaussian splat. Now I don't have a lot of experience with that, but luckily for me, in the first version of this product, it can convert that Gaussian splat into a 3D mesh with a texture that can really be easily imported into Unreal Engine and used right away like it's any other 3D mesh. I want to give a shout out to HTC who originally got me connected with Worlds and you can go watch their promo where they show how to use these 3D generated environments in a virtual production setting in the link below in the description. And let's get into how we generate these worlds and what it's like using them in Unreal Engine. Now the process is really simple to get started and what you're gonna go do is look for an image of an environment that's a fairly wide shot. And I started by doing this by going on Google and searching for a New York City loft location that's really famous and I found a cool photo of it and I uploaded this directly to Marble. From there, you hit enter and it starts generating in the background. And after about a minute or two, maybe five, something like that, you're going to get a Gaussian splat. If you don't know what that is, it basically doesn't matter. You can WASD around in this web view of this world and the results are incredible. It's going to generate not only the mesh of the photo that you saw, but it's gonna generate what was behind it and to the side of it. It generates a full 360 interior that's pre-lit based on the source image and it fills in the blanks mostly of the geometry. It's pretty incredible. Now from there, you can download this in multiple formats like PLY and sort of na native Gaussian splat formats. But for me in Unreal Engine, I only care about the mesh. So this does require the pro plan, which is as of the launch is $1 a month, which is what I've been doing. I forget how much it is after that might be like 40 or 30 or got to go look at the website. But if you do the $1 a month right now, you can download the high quality mesh and it will generate it on their server from Gaussian splat to mesh with a texture. It does take about an hour or so. It takes a while. So you can do one or two at a time, come back, and then you can download the mesh and bring that into Unreal Engine. From there, you can import it like it's any other mesh directly into Unreal Engine, and it's going to automatically create a texture and material for you. A little technical note that I found is that in Unreal Engine 5.7, which is very new, it actually creates a perfect material. You don't have to do anything to it if you don't want. However, when you import this mesh directly into Unreal Engine 5.6, which is primarily still what I'm using because it's the most stable and all the plugins are working right now, that material actually shows sort of the UV islands as sort of highlighted on the mesh itself, which isn't really the most natural look. So what you're going to want to do for UE 5.6 is make a new material, select the material, and change it to unlit. I'll show you what that looks like in Engine if you've never seen that before. And then you're going to take the only texture that it comes with, the albedo, the base color, and you plug that directly into the emissive. You're all done. It's not a difficult material. The next step is to make a new blank level or map and bring that mesh right in there. You're going to notice that if you use the default settings that the mesh is upside down and also scaled in a sort of arbitrary way, because again, it's not based on like real world dimensions. So flip it over, bring in something for scale like a metahuman and scale it until it looks about right for your scene. But what you'll notice is that on the metahuman in this case, we're actually getting lighting from Lumen from that mesh onto the metahuman. Now, if I select the mesh and I turn off the basically Lumen light on it, you'll see that the metahuman is just completely black. And this is what you'd sort of expect if we didn't have Lumen on. So we'll turn basically Lumen back on on the mesh and we get this natural lighting that's sort of, uh, you know, the color bounced light of the environment naturally on the metahuman. And that helps the composite quite a bit. From there is the fun part for me, because as a cinematographer, what we're doing here is matching the lighting on the metahuman to the lighting of the environment. So in the case of this arcade set, which I think environment, which looks absolutely amazing, all I did was add a little bit of backlight from the top and from the sides, and I made those backlights pink. 
So it makes it feel like the light from the LED wall behind them or the LED sign is getting onto her. From there, because this was sort of like kind of a K-pop, you know, bright music video, I added two front rectangle lights and that was it. And here are the end results, like really pretty incredible. So if you're interested in getting the song and the mocap that I've shown here of the singer dancing, that mocap and song synced together are available on narrativemotion.com. And feel free to use that, of course, to do some cloth sim and marvelous designer. I made tutorials on that. You can go watch those on this channel and then add one of these marble backgrounds and, you know, see what you can come up with. Now, I've been doing this for a couple weeks now. And I want to give you a couple tips when you're getting started with this. The first is that the perspective of the prompt image matters a lot. If you give it an image of a city from overhead, from a very high angle, the best perspective when it gets converted to a Gaussian splat and then to a mesh, the best looking angle in 3D is going to be from that same angle. So that, that 3D set's going to look the best from a high angle. If you then come all the way down to the ground level, of that splat slash, slash mesh, it won't look as good, right? So you wanna think about what this environment is gonna be used for. And I think in most cases, when you're working with many humans, the best thing you wanna do is have it look good from about human eye level, right? So it'll look good from a little below and a little bit above. And interiors also work really, really well compared to exteriors. So from a technical point of view, this is mostly because it has a limited amount of texture resolution. It can only give you an 8K texture at the moment, just one. And the amount of vertices that it's going to give you, again, is that some sort of like, you know, arbitrary first pass version of it. They don't want to give you like, you know, millions and millions and millions of vertices. You're going to get like a two terabyte file and that's just impractical for them to calculate. It's expensive for them to do that. And impractical perhaps for you to be able to even open it and use it in Unreal Engine itself. So when you do interiors, all that budget of mesh and texture goes on to things that are close to you, the floor, the ceiling, the props. But when you do exteriors, some of that texture and resolution goes onto the sky. It goes onto stuff that's really, really, really far away that you're never gonna see. And you're just stretching your resolution and texture budget too thin. Let's talk about the pros and let's talk about the cons. Who, what is this good for? What is it probably not the best for? So let's start with the cons first. So first of all, this is natively uh, creating Gaussian splats, and that's the highest quality. If you're working at Unreal Engine, there's no native Gaussian splat importer or viewer, like I said, or not that I know of. And Gaussian splats are just not what Unreal Engine is natively used to working with, right? So you might be able to display it, but it's hard to edit them. You're not going to be able to light them traditionally. And so in Unreal Engine, Gaussian splats are sort of a wild card. So that is a bit of a negative, even though you can mesh it. The best quality is coming from the splat. So maybe eventually splats will be more like a first party, you know, first citizen, you know, quality asset in Unreal Engine. But as of now, splats are sort of like kind of a miscellaneous um, kind of weird thing in Unreal. The second negative that I've already covered is that in this early version, you're limited on vertice resolution and texture resolution. So if you're looking to use this environment for like a final quality commercial result, like you would get from an environment from say like the marketplace, it is not going to give you that. It is a lot more like a photogrammetry scan that you meshed and brought in. So it has the feeling and the vibe, and I'm, I'm really impressed with what you can get out of it. But that final mesh, you're not going to be able to like zoom in on an angle of like the table that's going to be there. It's going to look like sort of like kind of medium to low poly photogrammetry. So it's not really good if you're doing like really high quality arc viz or anything like that. Also, the native environments, even though you can generate a really big environment and it looks big from a certain angle, it actually isn't that big. So while it looks like the hallway goes really, really far, you can't actually, in a video game, use that mesh to actually walk around in that world. Even though it is sort of an optical illusion, kind of like forced perspective thing that's going on, it's not really like going to work out if you generate one splat put it into Unreal Engine and expect it to have that be your video game level, that's not likely. So that is a lot of cons. Sorry to pop the bubble, burst the bubble of anyone who was thinking they could use it in that way. And now they're seeing it being like, oh no, that's not exactly what I was thinking. 
given all those cons and the burst bubble, you know, why am I personally still interested in Marble and the environments that it creates and this technology as a whole? So the first thing that I noticed after generating a couple environments, especially the arcade environment, is the vast amount of natural variation in that scene because it was taken from, I believe, a real location or even if you generated it, whatever. The amount of variation that happens in like the vending machine with all the different objects in it and all the different textures and all the different things that are happening in that scene to do that by hand, to model that by hand and texture it, make all the texture variations needed, that would take me weeks or months and I probably couldn't even do it that well because I am not a professional environment artist. With this, I get all this natural breakup and this really cool patina, if that's the right word, of just kind of like the real world in the background that I am not ever able to really create myself as a 3D artist. So just the vast amount of variation and cool things happening in some of these splats or environments is really inspiring. And it's something more natural than I can typically get on my own. The second thing that is really compelling to me about this is the lighting itself. So if your prompt image has really compelling lighting or just you know a vibe that you like about it, it's gonna put that same vibe lighting around the entire environment. It's not always perfect or even logical sometimes, but like the vibe feels right. So if you just want like an environment that generally looks like um, you know, a certain type of architecture and style with a certain type of lighting, it just gets you there immediately. The third thing with these environments is that they're insanely performance because they're just a mesh that's unlit that don't require any lights. If we look at that arcade environment, if I was to take a modular marketplace asset with all of those, they'd be higher quality in Nana and better textures and reflections. But even to then light that arcade set to look like the environment that Marble generated would take a lot of work. You have to get the emissive right on all the signs. You're gonna have to have multiple light sources. And by the time you do that, just to light that environment is really heavy. I've done it in the past. It's fun. I like doing that for many commercial projects. That is still the right way to go. However, I just wanna say that once you do that, that is going to eat your frame rate and it's gonna be very, very slow compared to a splat that is unlit. So the, the last thing that I like working with these environments, other than it being really fast, I mean, that's I think that's the given with any AI tools, that this takes about, it takes an hour because you have to generate the mesh and that's that's a slow process, but like it takes about a minute to generate these. So you could just do like how many in an hour, you're like an awful lot, right? So the iteration time, of course, with any AI process like this is super fast. But the thing that that I really like about this process after doing so many of them is really personal to me is that it reminds me of working at a real location as a cinematographer. Very rarely slash never would you walk into a real location of like a club or a bar and be like, wow, I can look in any direction in here and it's going to look amazing. No, we're hired to come in and be like, okay, for this scene right there, this bar with this background, we're going to go right there and we're going to light and shoot into this tiny sliver of that set and we're going to make it look amazing. And then for this one scene, that one wall, if I move the couch there and I do this, I'm going to shoot into this tiny sliver of the real world set right there and it's going to look good. And it gives this illusion that the whole location is like incredible. But in reality, we're looking for the very best little pieces of it. And it's this scavenger hunt scout that you do in live action filmmaking, which I haven't done in a long time, actually. But this is sort of the virtual version of it. What I've been doing is a whole lot of, uh, you know, uh, how, how do I put this, uh, kind of scavenging of the internet of real world photos, prompted photos from Google banana, uh, version three, Sora, Firefly, all like AI and real world sourcing of images. I just look for like, oh, like where's like one little cool part of that environment. And I find it and I chuck it into marble and it creates a 3d prelit version for me. That's all vibes. And I just put it right in the background in Unreal Engine. I'm like, what does it look like? And then it's fun for me to light it. So it's sort of, again, like just like hunting in the real world location scouting, except I'm online. And whenever I find a photo generated or real of a background environment that I like, I can just boom, capture that into 3D and start using it immediately for my work in 3D with MetaHumans. And to me, it's very exciting and, you know, being able to match the lighting onto the metahuman of the environment and make that all look cohesive. It's, it's a fun process. And I have a couple projects coming up where I need to have 
uh, it would be good for the project to have multiple environments. But practically, in most cases, even if they were each different marketplace assets or just me configure them, I was like, I don't have the time or really the expertise in a lot of cases to actually make those environments. I think that for some of those projects that basically prompting with Midjourney or Google Nana Banana or finding source images, I would be able to make multiple, multiple environments given that same time budget and constraint for that project. So I see a lot of promise with this. It is not a replacement for the marketplace. It's not nanite quality meshes coming out of it. Um, I think there's work that could be done with mixing like tripo, 3D generated meshes or marketplace meshes or handmade ones, however you want to get them and mixing them together. But when it comes to really fast concepts where again, much of the environment is out of focus and you're only moving the camera a little bit side to side and maybe just a little bit of depth, that these generated environments, even in this early phase with marble are incredibly promising. And it is a really just new, interesting way of working in Unreal Engine that I'm excited to keep experimenting with. So that wraps it up for this video. Um, I'd be really interested to see what kind of environments you're able to get in Unreal Engine. And I'm even more interested if you can get a MetaHuman with a cloth solve in there, because that's what I'm working on. And if you want to continue this discussion about MetaHumans, cloth solves, mocap, and, you know, some of the AI generated stuff, feel free to join me on the Workman Labs Discord that's linked in the description below. And as always, if you're looking for mocap for your MetaHumans, especially for cloth solves, check out narrativemotion.com, and I'll see you on the next video.